this month our theme has been has been change it's our month of change changing for the better changing for the better hallelujah and i explained the first time i thought on this that people can change for the worse or change for the better but every human being is changing amen People you know 10 years ago, if you see them today, they are not the same. I promise you that. They have changed. Hallelujah. So people are changing for the better. People are changing for the worse. And I said, don't blame people for changing. It's a constant thing in life. So when people are changing, just respect them. Respect their change. You know, don't blame them. It's just how life is. And if their change is making sense to you, then play along. If their change is not making sense to you, play out. <laughs> Amen. Just, uh-huh, you understand what I'm saying. So, but today we are looking at keeping your integrity while changing. While you are changing, you know, a lot of people change and change away. Please pay attention. Let me give you guys maybe one minute to settle in, let your mind settle in before I continue. Mm -hmm. 30 more seconds and we can continue. Just make sure that you are ready to receive, you're ready to hear, then I'll continue. So do everything you have to do. If you have to text somebody right now, text them and let us end it so that I'll focus. All right. Okay. So some people, when they are changing, their integrity changes with them. As believers, we have to keep our integrity while changing. We have to keep our integrity. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no while you are changing. You understand what I'm saying? So keep your integrity while changing. Um, And there is a way this message will go today. So if this is for you, make sure you work with it. Make sure you work with it. There is a statement that says... The end justifies the means. How many people know that statement? You heard it before? Everybody heard the same before? The end justifies the means. That's not completely true. Because if you look at the real meaning, that means if somebody became rich, as long as he was rich, whether he killed somebody to become rich, the richness justifies, you get what I'm saying? So that's not always true. So, but we're going to refine the statement to make it true. We will say the good end justified the good means. Does that make sense for us now? So the good end justified the good means. So the end don't always justify the means, but the good end will always justify the good means. And um, what I'm saying is to help us be, be more, um, more real, put it that way. Just be more real. Have integrity. If they say, oh, if I say, okay, I'm going to get to church at 7 a.m., I know, I know, I know that um, Toby's going to be there at 7. I know that Toby's going to be there at 7. You see, it's an integrity that I already kept that made me think that way, that I know. So if, if he always come at 7, and I know that he's always keeping to his 7, the day I come and he's not there at 7, what happens? I'll be worried. That maybe something has gone wrong. That's why it's not here. Keep your integrity while you're changing. And remember, your change should be a change for good. You know, I'm trying to think how I should put it. That's why I'm still trying to take your time. You see, and I'm trying to put it in such a way that it will be very uh, digestible for everyone without you thinking too much. You know, some people start something. They start something. They rush into it. But you see, the end, when people come around me and they're rushing, oh, ha, ha, I just be like, don't worry. I will support you in that you're rushing. But I'm just watching you to see when this rushing will stop. I understand what I'm saying. So people are, they're quick. They're quick to be very, very quick to commit very quick. You say, calm down, relax, relax. No, no, don't rush. <laughs> give them time. Then you will know. When you give people time, 
Time always tells everything. No? When you give them time, you will know where that rushing is coming from, where that commitment is coming from. It's time that tells everything. The, the only time you know somebody that was really committed was after many times, many years. The person is still committed. That's when you know somebody is committed, though. It's not when they are rushing that first time. I understand what I'm saying. Am I helping somebody? Yeah, it could be in your personal life. It could be in your ministries. Because everybody here should have ministries. Should lead something sometime in the future, at least, if not near, far. The, way, the time you know, when you know somebody is really committed to you, is not when they started. It's later that you know. You evaluate their later and when they started. That's when you know, okay, this person is really committed. This person is really committed. So the end of a matter would always justify, or, or let's not use justify, will always tell you if the person was really there. Um, I know some of you don't know this bishop, but some of you will know the bishop. But I will try to explain for people who don't know him. There's a bishop called Bishop Abioye. So some of you know him, some of you don't. But Bishop Abioye is a, is a bishop that had been with his leader before the leader's ministry started. So they've known each other before church started. But they've known each other as Christians. And when the church started, God told him to hang on with the man. So he hung on with the man. Till date, he's still there. Even now they retired him, he's still there. That's how you know somebody that was there. There were people that were there, that came even after him, that they had little issues, and they ran away. And they went to go and start their own. I remember, ah, let me give you this story. In 1990. When I say 1990, if you are not born in 1990, close your ears. <laughs> if you are not born by 1990. Anyway, history will be history for you. So in 1993, 94, I believe, about that time, there was a pastor. Pastor, hi. Mommy will remember that pastor. Pastor La, thank you. This pastor was assisting Bishop Oedego. For those that don't know Bishop Oedego, Bishop Oedego is one of the biggest bishops in Christendom. Do you know Bishop Oedipo, prophet? You don't know him? Oh, go and research him. They say he's one of the, he's the richest, but we don't, we're not sure. But that's what they said. So he's one of the biggest. Shall I research him? You like him too. I like him. I actually gave my life to Christ after I preached in 1990 something. So now, this pastor, Ola, was the fire of the church. Like, People didn't want to listen to the bishop that was the founder of the church. People prefer to listen to Pastor Ola than the bishop. So you see, he was committed from the beginning. But immediately, maybe it was the devil, or maybe it's not the devil, maybe just how it was. Once he, he felt and he saw that people were coming towards him, then the bishop, what did he do? He decided to go and start his own church and tear away. After he left, till today, nobody, I've never heard about him since. Are, are you catching the story? He could have just stayed. He could have just stayed. He would have just had more impact. We loved him when he was there. Honestly speaking, we wanted, me, I would have loved to hear more of him because I love the way he teaches too. But immediately he left. That was it. It was done. Maybe the people that gathered with, together with him Stayed with him for a little bit, but there was nothing keeping, there was no magnet. When we were in Farrakaway, uh, we were on Beach 60, we're still in Farrakaway, but when Beach 67, you know, me, I have a very big God, you understand? <laughs> so, you guys, better start inviting your family and friends, because we're looking to get the bigger place, that's a very big God. Anyway, so, so they can benefit, of course. When I came, because about 2006, that was when the first time I put my foot here, you know, in this land. So when I came, I saw our church. Our church was a, a good church, beautiful, but the space was small. So it started boiling in my spirit. Like, I said, 
talking to daddy, like, you know, we have to live here. You know, this place is small. We need a bigger place. We have to leave it. We have to do that. You know, all those good things. And then, fortunately, some members were feeling the same way too because the place gets full to a point where people are sweating, even in, in uh, winter. We have to, like, turn on this uh, uh, commercial heater, you know. And so, we went to see a bigger place, which was very nice, on Conega. I remember that day. I was there. They didn't tell me the story. We were, we were inside. Then one, one of the nurses in the church, because then it was nurses that had money. Mm-hmm. One of the nurses in the church came and saw me and daddy trying to fix something in there. And immediately she said, hey, hey, this is the place we're supposed to be worshiping now. Don't worry. So that is like, but where are you going to see money? to be paying the rent. That's the problem. It's not that the place is not good. And the lady said, don't worry, pastor, don't worry. Uh -uh. I mean, we have a couple of nurses who will be bringing the money. And I was very happy, as naive as I was. (laughs) I was very happy. So we made the woman left. I told my dad, I'm like, hey, hey, you see? They were bringing the money. He looked at me and said, you don't know anything. Watch and see how much money they bring. After the next Sunday, that woman did not come again. The woman that was encouraging us to go and put carry basic. <laughs> I understand what I'm saying. But you see, maybe she meant it. Maybe she did not mean it. You understand? So I'm not saying whether she meant it or not. But the point is, at the end, we'll always tell you if the person was really there. So as Christians, while you're changing, please keep your integrity. How many people know that they are, I mean, I'm talking to everybody now. I'm talking to everybody. Please, catch this one. You, you are a child. When you were with your parents, you were helping them out. Maybe you were paying bills, paying rent, paying insurance, paying something in the house. The moment you left, I started living by yourself, you forgot that you had parents. Shame on you. If you're like that, shame on you. Shame on you. So in case you have not left your parents, the day you leave, should be there you even doubled the support. Yes, you're supposed to change. For the, for the better, right? You're not supposed to keep living with your parents. At some point, you should move on with your life. But as you move on with your life, remember that you have parents. Don't just move and move with all your life as though you're the one that created yourself. You're the one that gave it to yourself. Did that hit everybody? It hit everybody. When you leave your parents, if you have left your parents and you're not for fulfilling what I just said now. Repent. Repent in your mind now. Make a decision now to start reaching back out. Make a decision now. Keep your integrity. They know you to always support. They know you to always help out. They know you to always carry them around. You now move. You now forgot about everything that you're supposed to do. That means you were really not doing it. It was like just, you know some people really are just doing things because, ah, I'm around now. What can I do now? I'm around. Eh. I think, wake up one day and be like, wait, let me even go to my parents' house. Let me see if they have plates to wash. If you're done, I used to wash a plate before. Washing plate means doing dishes. <laughs> you're not a those dishes before, right? Uh-huh. And then you left. Of course, it was time for you to leave. Once, once in a week, once in two weeks, whatever your time permits, you can just stroll back there and see if there's dishes in the sink and do it. Keep your integrity while you're changing. While you're moving up the ladder, while you are going higher, keep your integrity. Keep doing what you used to do. Is that helping us at all? You guys are very quiet, though. Am I touching your, somewhere in your chest? <laughs> you are very quiet. But it's making sense, right? Keep your integrity. Don't, don't, don't run away and just leave them to suffer. I mean, they're not going to suffer. If you were dead, they will still be alive. But you keep your own integrity so that when you're not dead, they will miss you. That's what I always say. I always say that anywhere I go to, the day I, I'm not there anymore, they will know somebody was there. You, there's no way you're not going to know somebody was there. Because I'm going to do the best I can, as though that's the only place I will ever be. So that the day I'm not there, somebody will miss me and say, oh, he's not there. What happened? If he was here, this would have happened. If he was there, that would have happened. I want you to take that same mindset. There's a scripture that talks about the width and the third, Right? Let's use that scripture to understand. Matthew 13. 
um, 24 to 30. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in the field. The seed they sowed was good. Please help us close that door. The seed they sowed was a good seed. It wasn't a bad seed. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed what? Tars among the wheat and went his way. Now, maybe one day we would explain the scripture very well, but we're going to use it for effect today, for application. But when the grain had sprouted and produced the crop, then the tares also appeared. How many people understand the wheat and the tares? Ah, no farmers here. If you plant corn, let me use corn to explain it. How many people know corn? You people know corn now. But have you seen a corn grain from the ground before? Have you seen it? No, eh? Say no. People are jebo. It is your jebo. I've not seen it. Um, Antonio, have you seen it, um, the corn seed um, plant coming out from the ground? No. Hi. You, you should have seen it. You have seen it. Okay, so let me explain. Let me take my time to explain so that everybody will understand. So when you plant corn, maize, so how you plant it, in case you don't know, if you get a good fertile ground in your compound, take, or like a little thing, you can take one or two or three, and just throw it in the soil and keep putting water. As long as there's sunlight and the soil is good, it will come out. Now, when it comes out, sprout out from the ground, it looks like the grass. So when the corn is coming out, of course, because it's, it's earth, other uh, wheat, Sabina tears will, will come out too. So at that beginning stage, if you try to cut the tares from the corn, what's going to happen is we're going to cut everything because they all look alike. So as they grow, one day I'll try to see if I can get an image of this. As they grow, even as they grow to some certain stage, they're still going to look alike. But later on, you'll be able to tell the difference between the corn and the tares. That's what the scripture is talking about. It says, so the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, do you want us then to go and gather them up? Should we go and just remove the tares? Look at what he said. But he said, no, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Because they look alike. Let both grow before we get to this both grow. So when the one who has a good mind, who has integrity, and the one who doesn't, when they start, they will look alike. That's what I'm saying. When they come and tell you that they are committed to you, I'm committed to service. Those of you that have had heartbreak, had heartbrokenness, <laughs> heartbreak in the past, and now have good break, I mean good hearts. When the one that gave you heartbreak and the one that's now good, when they came, were they not looking alike? They both had promises. I'm talking about both men and women, male and female. They both looked all right. It was later down the line, so they seen all the red flags and yellow flags and purple flags. So the same thing, let them grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will... Say to the reapers, first, gather together the tares and bind them in the bundle and burn them, but gather the wheat into the barn. So you would not and never know the true intent and the true um, character or the true state of a man's mind on, unless you give them time. It's only time that will tell you. Only time. So, but as Christians and as brothers and sisters today, what I'm trying to tell you now for our own consumption is while you are changing for good, keep your integrity. When you make up your mind to do that, it's a blessing. It's always a blessing. I know some CEOs 
I mean, I don't mean CEOs are just CEOs because they just register the business. I mean CEOs that are very well to do. They are doing well. But you see, you will see them in traffic control units. When they started being in traffic control units, traffic control units are people that tell cars where to park, like during service now, for example. They started that when they didn't have anything, maybe when they even were little. And they continued in that department. And even after they started making crazy money, they didn't leave their post. Integrity. Some people left, though. Not everybody. It's only few people that remain. Not the one that the Lagos State Governor is shaking people's hand that year. No, he doesn't shake people's hand again. <laughs> Not the governor. He doesn't have to shake anybody's hand. That's no integrity. I'm talking about people that are doing well. Still, they will come to church and sweep the church. They were sweeping the church. They didn't say, now, now that, you know, we are, we, are, we are billionaires, let's just leave this sweeping the church for people that are coming up in the church. No, they kept sweeping the church. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a mindset that they had before that's helping them today. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, First, gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Is this helping you today? When people come into your life, don't rush. Don't rush. Take your time. Watch. Watch very well. Give them time. Don't expect the worst. Expect the best. Give people grace, but give them time. Don't rush. And also, as you are watching a live like that, you too have integrity. I want you to think about it now. I know some of you need to think about this thing. Think about it now and figure it out. Like, have a mindset now. Try to get this mindset that you're going to have, in, you're going to have integrity. That I, this is what, who I am. This is what I'm doing. And regardless, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like this. This is how I'm going to be. And this is how I'm going to be. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind now. That this I'm going to be, and nothing is going to change it. This is what I'm going to be doing, and nothing is going to change it. No trials in life, no tribulation, no, I hear they said, they did not say, and he said, and she now said, and then we now said, and they now said. You know, you know many times when we go, when we hear some people judge cases, they will say they said. They will ask them, who said? They don't know who said, but they said. So whether they said, he said, she said, just make up your mind how you're going to live your life. Make up your mind how you're going to serve God. This is what I'm going to be doing. And this is, what I, this is how I'm going to do it. Integrity, regardless of what happens. Hallelujah. Are you still here? Mm -hmm. So let me give you some steps. If you're going to live in this correct life. The first step is to start with the right mindset. Anything that you did not start with the right mindset is going to end soon. Shall I repeat that again? Anything that you did not start with the right mindset would not last, will end very soon. So the first thing is to start whatever you're doing with the right mindset. I used um, about your parents. Let's use that as an example. Please apply this to all areas of life. These are principles that will work anywhere. It's like a formula. Plug it into any equation. It will solve it. So let's use the parental example again. You're giving, supporting your parents because you're living in the same house. The question is, why were you doing that? Did you, were you doing it with the right mindset? Were you doing it because, well, because I'm here now, I have to do it. That's the wrong mindset to do it. Because remember, in the first place, you did not... Uh, beg your parents to bring into this world, right? Did anybody beg his parents to <laughs> give birth to him? I'm sure if you had to beg your parents, he won't be your parents. <laughs> he didn't get that. <laughs> I know the people that you want them to give birth to you. If you was, if you, if you had to beg somebody to, to come to this world, but don't worry, you are, you are, you are, you are from the right family. You are in the best family that you can be. You are there because your potentials will shine. The reason why your position is not shining as bright as it should shine now is because you're not taking advantage of that situation. Hallelujah. So anyway, you didn't beg your parents to come to this world. They gave birth to you. So technically, they should handle their business. 
So don't be helping out. Don't be giving back because, well, I live here now. So let me just do. Don't do like that. The reason why you should help out is because there's a need and I'm here to solve it. Not because, well, I'm here now. And if you have this mindset that my parents need this and I can provide it, I will do it. You will see somebody on the street that needs help and you will do it too. It will just be a, your part of your life. So you're doing it out of love. Like, no, I can't see my parents stressing themselves. And I will just do it. So let me just do it. Even if the, There will be some time, if you have this mindset, there will be some times where it's going to be your last money, your last help. And you'll just make up your mind and be like, even if this is the last one I can do, let me just do it. And you'll do it. And this is not only to your parents. It could be to anybody that's serving as your parents. It doesn't have to be your biological parents. Hallelujah. So first and foremost, start with the right mindset. The second part is what we just talked about. Keep that integrity. Have integrity while changing. Keep that your integrity. Don't lose it. If you started with the right mindset, of course, then there's no point changing because you did not start because I now live here. That's why. You are doing it because you don't want to see them in pain. So if you are, even if you left, it will still be in your head that I don't want to see them in pain. But if you were giving and helping now because I'm here now, let me just help out. Then the day you leave, you are no more there, right? So you don't have to help out again. Apply this to every part. I'm using this as an example, which I know that it's good that I'm using it so that you can hear it. All right? The next part is while you are changing, which is the integrity part again, but I'm branching out, stay connected to your source while you are changing. Now, this is general. Now, in life, you're going to change for the better. You're going to change for the better. Ooh, I just remember something I will share with you now. You're going to change for the better. As you are changing for the better, stay connected to your source. If you don't stay connected to your source, <laughs> it's going to be bad, though. Let's look at one scripture, then I will tell you what I wanted to tell you, in case I don't remind me, in case I forget. John chapter 15, we're going to read 4 to 7. Remain in me, and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruits if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. So as you are changing, if you want to be fruitful, remain in God. Don't have money. And next thing, the things you normally do before, maybe you normally call people, follow up people, maybe you normally go out for evangelism, maybe you are playing the instrument, maybe whatever it is, you're sweeping the church. Next thing, you don't want to do it again because you're not a big boy or a big girl. No, don't be like that. Because you are changing, yes. You are changing upward. Glory be to God. But if you want to bear fruit while changing, while prospering, while succeeding, if you want to bear fruit, you have to stay connected to your source. Remain in me and I will remain in you, for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Now, this fruit is not having money. I want you to take note. This fruit is not having money or building houses. Building houses and having money is changing. It's part of the changing. But if you're really going to bear fruit, the fruit that will count for you, on judgment day, the fruit that will be that will count for you, you have to remain in God. Verse 5: Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. Somebody said, Well, what of that a uh, man that's rich but is not a Christian? He's helping people. Hey, say it's Sarah. That doesn't count on the judgment day. It doesn't count on anything. But you as a Christian, helping people counts. Should I put that again? An unbeliever, <laughs> an unbeliever helping people, it doesn't count on the judgment day. But as a Christian, if you help somebody, it counts. It counts to your account. An unbeliever's morality doesn't count. It doesn't count for anything. Because the, the righteousness of a man is like a filthy rag. So if you're not born again, your, your morality doesn't count. But if you're born again, your morality counts. 
let's not go deeper in that one too much. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Far apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone, can, uh, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch. You've seen that? So if you are not in him, there is no fruit. You are not bearing any fruit. You are just doing activity. And with us, such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. For those people who think money is, you think money is a measurement of bearing fruit. <laughs> you are wasting time. It's not money. People that are not bearing fruit are making money. You can make money, you can be the richest, but if you are not, if you are not in Christ, you are not bearing fruit. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Let's not go into asking. Let's continue in our integrity talk. How many people know Elon Musk here? Everybody knows Elon Musk, right? So we can use him as an example. You know, when you tell people in the house of God, in Christendom, give. You can give your way to success. And whatever they tell you, tell you people. Some of them are not true, but... Uh-huh. But anytime they talk about giving, you know what some people say? What are you talking about? You are just siphoning people's money, you know? And that um, the richest people in this world, are they givers? Did they give anybody? Did they give to church? And I'm like, I, won't, I would like to do a research one day to p- prove to these people that they gave. And that's the secret they're not telling you people. How many people know Colgate? Colgate was giving tithes. He promised God. He said he has done all he can, and he, he failed. Then he promised God. He said, if this thing will work, God, I'll be giving you tithes. And the tithe wasn't 10%. It was bigger. And that's how to today, I don't know Colgate, but I've used Colgate all my life. Let's look at Elon Musk. Do you know that Elon Musk sponsors the gospel? People don't know. Elon Musk is a big sponsor of the gospel. Elon Musk puts billions into spreading the gospel. Why do you think Elon Musk is supported um, Donald Trump? God bless you. So he hated the fact that America has turned my child into this because it was America that turned the child into that. If they were not teaching them in school, if they were not seeing it on TV and everywhere, he would not think about it. They say, hey, well, that's how he was born. It's a lie. Nobody was born that way. And they did it to the point where even a two-year-old can, like the daughter can decide for a two-year-old, and if the parent talk, they will lock the parent up. What kind of nonsense is that? A two-year-old that's not even 18. That cannot even, so that means... <laughs> You are saying, me, don't beat your child. Don't tell your, don't, don't, don't tell your child anything yet until he's 18. But you, you can record their mindset and change them. Can you see what demon? That's why when I see people, when I see people saying, oh, they only vote, they vote for Kamala because she's black and she's a woman. I'm like, you, you, are, you don't have sense. Sense? Not just, <laughs> there's no sense in this your head. I saw so many people post this thing on, on social media that they are trying to, Paint the picture that because she was a female and she was black, that's why she wasn't voted in. No, that wasn't why. People are not blind. They can see the atrocity that these other people were committing and they were going to finish us. And that was why a lot of people voted for him. And because of his agenda to stop those nonsense, which he started already, that was why Elon was supporting him. Supported him. Came out to this thing. How much was he even giving him every day? I'd be every 50, 50 million every day or every time they had their stuff because you must win. He was angry. How can my child turn to this? In America, you people are legalizing this thing. He was angry because people don't know that these rich people are Christians. They don't know. They don't know. They think they are just there. They're just there and it's, it's just hard work. Okay. <laughs> it's not just hard work, brothers and sisters. Work, no problem. It's by grace. You, there are people that are working harder than Elon Musk. Elon Musk wasn't the owner of Tesla. He wasn't the one that found it. It was other people that found it, though. It was grace that brought him close to them. Then he bought it from them. So my point is, keep your integrity. Let's get back to integrity. 
Keep your integrity. For those of you that are, are givers, keep your integrity. For those of you that are not givers, start giving. You are hearing it now. Start giving. Start giving. Don't give. He wasn't give. He's not giving so that God will bless him. More. It's just his nature. So don't give so that God will bless God has already blessed you. So don't give. Don't ever give. Oh, I'm giving this so that God will do this. Don't do that. Just give because it's your nature. There are some times I give. Because hmm? I want to balance that talk. There are some times I give. And once I give, the Spirit of God ministered to me what will happen because I gave. I did not give so that that will happen. I just gave out of love. But I got the signal what I just paid for. And I didn't, it's not like I paid for anything. You get what I'm saying? So when you give, things change. Things happen. But don't give because you want things to happen. Just give out of love. Just give out of love. But there's no giving that you don't get back. The Bible says that if you give, you get... She is 800 fold or 1,000 fold. So some people now want to go and give. They come to church. They give $10. 10 times 100 is out. 1,000. So they'll just give $10. We're expecting 1,000. <laughs> then when the 1,000 complete, they'll come back again and give 20. I mean, you can try that, and you see that it actually works. But don't give because of that. Don't do it. Because even if you did it because of that, sometimes you might be disappointed. And then you hate giving. Give because you love God. Anyway, keep your integrity in anything you're doing. I just had to pull up that story because I said I was going to share it in the beginning, but I forgot. I just remembered. Keep your integrity. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't let anybody sway you. And so that you can understand the kind of giving that he gave so that I, I balance so I can pray. I may put no rhapsody of reality here. It's like a daily devotion now. They have it in like almost all the languages. They share like billions of copies every month. I read it too, and it's a daily devotion that's really good, you know, um, when I have a chance to grab the copy because I'm not like very close to them right now. So, But anyway, he, he, they just named him the... Is it the highest sponsor of the of that um, daily devotional? A daily devotional that has almost all the languages, if not all the languages in this world. I mean, any village you go into, whatever they are speaking, they have it in print. Now, somebody who is the highest sponsor, and you share a billion copies a monthly, do you know that to print one copy is more than one dollar? So if you're sharing, let's say, 6 billion copies, 3 billion, I don't know how many billion copies, monthly, and he's the highest giver towards it, that means this guy must, be, must have been giving billions towards that project. And somebody will tell you that, hey, they just want to take your money. Okay. <laughs> somebody who's able to sponsor a campaign, 15 million daily. Do you know that as we are talking right now, <laughs> that man is making money? <laughs> Hit yourself on the chest and say, I repeat after me, say, I will never be broke in my life. The only reason why you are just fighting the small change that you're supposed to give to God is because you are broke. <laughs> if you have money, you would not be anything. You love God, Abby. Yes. So why are you not fighting <laughs> Giving to God. Because you are broke. I will never be broke in my life. I will never, 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 never. Let's pray. So please don't forget the, the theme of the script of the teaching. Keep your integrity. Make sure you have integrity. Keep it. Make sure it's there. While you are changing for good by the grace of God, make sure you are you. You remain you. We'll continue this conversation on Thursday by the grace of God. We'll continue it on Thursday. Why don't you rise up to your feet and just begin to pray?